Mom, what are you doing here? I've been watching your painting episodes, Poopsie. Mom, please don't call me Poopsie. I'm sorry, Poopsie. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Poopsie, I watched your painting episodes and you inspired me to get out my paints and paint a self-portrait of my gorgeous face and I think I aced it. Poopsie, I don't want to brag or nothing. But it's obvious you got your autistic talents from me and your bald head and Crisco hips from your father's mother, Ugly Bertha. Ah, uh, who there, Kitty Taylor? I might be ugly, but I'm not taking the blame for your defective genes producing a bald-headed, Crisco-hipped artist. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, please, at least have the courtesy to talk about me behind my back. Mama Taylor, show us your painting. Yeah, Mama Taylor, let's see it. Okay, here's my masterpiece. What do you think? What in the tarnation is that? Why, it's an abstract portrait of me. It looks just like you, Kitty Taylor, especially those seedy eyes close together. Just because you're missing the cheese on your cracker and don't know fine art when you see it. Fine art? I'll show you fine art. What do you think of this? That's Marilyn Monroe. I'm so glad you see the resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's just roll the movie. <laughs> hey, stop playing with that remote. <laughs> okay. Now, I had many requests. I think one person asked. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, a few people asked about the landscape that I did uh, during a speed painting. So, you know what? I thought I would do a step-by-step -step demonstration on how it is done. Now, feel free to use this as your own. You can. You can sell it to whatever you want. Because, really, no two paintings are ever alike. So, let's begin. And I'm going to show you what we want to start out with is the sky area. And we're going to... Uh, basically draw a horizontal line maybe just a little bit below half okay let me get my brush here up where is it okay here we go and what I'm going to do the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm using a two inch brush I'm going to use white let's get a little bit of white going here's my palette let me explain my palette here real quick I have uh, starting out we have titanium white Mars black, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, a light green, a sap green, teal, violet, cadmium orange, cadmium red, and um, it's uh, crimson. Okay, now we probably won't use all these colors. Uh, maybe we will. Who knows? But as we go along, I'll tell you what colors they are, and you can improvise. Please feel free to use whatever colors you want. We're going to keep this really simple. Uh, what this is going to teach you is to just relax and let go and just create something nice. You know, and then we'll do abstracts next time. We'll do another abstract. We'll be mainly doing abstracts, but I thought I'd give this a little break because of the requests that I had. Okay, without further ado, let me grab a quick cup of coffee. Where is it? Okay, you should have a cup of coffee too. Put on beautiful music, relax, enjoy yourself.
Painting is all about enjoying. You don't want to rush. You want to have quiet time where you can be left alone and just paint. Now, okay, what we're going to do is, my brush is a little bit on the damp side because I soak it in a bucket of water. You could do it overnight, or I keep mine in the water all the time. Okay, what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of white on the tip of my brush, just like that, just a little bit. Let me put down the palette. I'm not used to working with a palette. I usually do it just to show you how things, uh, how it blends. Always have plenty of paper towels with you. You want to wipe it off a little bit. And then all we're going to do is just scrub it on. Now, what I'm doing, I have a, uh, I think it's a 16 by 20 canvas, and I've primed it with gray. I love gray. I love working off gray. Now, you can prime it any way you want. Now, I'm going to pick up a little bit more paint, and I'm just going to scrub it in. Just fire it in there and don't be afraid. You cannot make a mistake. You can only paint over it. That's all you have to do, paint over it. You're not going to make any mistakes. Okay, let me just get a little bit more white. Wipe it off. Fire it in. And I've gone probably uh, just about half of my canvas, although that will not be where my horizon line will be. We're just going to keep it really simple. Okay, let's wash off our brush. Excuse me while I go down. Oh, oh, oh getting too old for this. Oh, ow, oh, okay. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is take our Mars Black and put a little bit on your brush, just like that. Okay, let me put this down. Always keep a paper towel in my hand. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a mountain. And I'm going to show you how that's done. You just go like this. Maybe come up and come down. Don't worry about being perfect. You just want to fill in form. Always go for the form. Okay, and we're going to do something like this. We're basically drawing it in as we go. Now, I'm left-handed, so... And we're going to have a dip right about there. Now, what we're going to do also, we're going to be using a smaller brush. This one, uh, the uh, two-inch uh, boar bristle brush, which you can get at Walmart for like 55 cents or something. Okay, what you're going to do is paint all the rest of it black. Just the lack of this. Uh, just get in there and fire it in. We're going to paint the whole thing black. We just want a general mountain. See how simple that is? Not hard. Basically, what painting is, is that you're building up layers. You have to start and build up layers. Okay, now we can fine tune this and get this more perfect, but we're not going to do that right at this moment. Might get a little peak going up here. Okay, now what I would say is it's time to go. Uh, let's work on the sky, otherwise I was going to take a coffee break while this dries. You want this to be completely dry. That would help, but you know what? Uh, with, with black, which I've always said, is you really don't want to just use uh, Mars black directly on the canvas. You always want to mix it with something. So even though I just put the black down here, let's add a little bit of the Violet. I'll add some violet in there, just like that. Maybe a little bit. You. What I would suggest is to use uh, crimson. Always works well. Let's get a little bit here. But I don't have that right now. But you know, any color like red or um, some sort of a violet that always works. Okay, but basically what you want to do is uh, it adds a little bit more depth to it when you add color to the black. Now you could add blue and you'll see as we go along when we add colors to this how it's going to uh, the pop. Let me wipe off my brush here real quick. But by 
adding a color into the black. You could use ultramarine blue, crimson, uh, but you never want to really just put black directly on the canvas. Always mix it with a color. Let me wipe this off. Okay. Got a little bit more purple going on over here. But that's the thing. You want to always uh, add a little bit of uh, color into it. It adds depth to it. Let me just add a little bit more here. Okay. Okay, tones it down. Okay. Next we're going to be working on the sky area. Let's do that. Well, this is drying. Technically what I want to do is I want to let this completely dry. So I'm going to work on the uh, top part, the sky part, but let me clean my brush again. It's very important to always clean your brush whenever you're picking up new colors for the most part. Keep a rag handy. Uh, paper towels work good, but I always have a rag. You know, one of our best towels, my wife don't know. I snuck in a drawer and took it. Oh, she's going to kill me when she finds out. But hopefully she won't. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the sky area. Okay, let's see. We need blue. We did not get blue here. Let's see if we can get a little blue here. We're going to use processed blue. Yep. I hope you enjoyed that uh, cartoon video I did. I just want to tell you that the uh, my mother in the sequence was actually my father when he was like 96 years old. Uh, he passed away when he was 98, just about a year or two ago. And uh, what he did, he was a good sport. I got him to put on a wig. So I use him as a character for my mother. And the other characters in the composition, uh, the cartoon, are just fabricated for the most part. So, but I thought that was kind of cool. So I used my dad. He's, he still lives that way. And he was a good sport. He, he always got a kick out of stuff like that. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of the blue. Oops, picked up a little orange. Didn't want to do that. Colors too close together. Not good. Let me wipe that off. Try that again. Okay, let's pick up a little bit of the blue. What we're going to do is keep the paper towel handy and wipe it off. Remember, you want to lay in colors lightly. Just a little bit. My brush is just a little damp. Just like this. And then we're going to add a little bit of white to it. You just scrub it in there just like that. There you go. Maybe along the top you'd see more blue. Okay, let's get a little bit of white going. We're going to take a little bit of the white just like this. And, okay. Now, I did not clean my brush. I still have a little bit of blue on here, and there's a method to that madness. Now, I did not wipe my brush off at this time. I just have a little bit of paint going on. You see how that's, see how that just kind of like feathers in? You scrub it in. Now we're gonna fi we're gonna fine tune the horizon area a little bit later on when this dries. We don't want to uh, we don't want to accidentally pick up black and then put that on our painting. But yeah, don't be afraid. Put a little white in there and mix the blue in with the white. Just scrub it in there. A little bit of paint at a time. You see how the sky just all comes together? And see along here is where we'll have our horizon. So we'll amplify that with a little bit of white as a little bit later on. Okay, now it's a sunny day out there, so we're going to put just a tiny bit of yellow in there, some cadmium yellow, like this. Uh, let's take just a little bit, just a, just a tiny bit on that brush. Don't overdo it. Not good. It's always to do less because you can add more. If you put too much paint on, not good. It's just like if you uh, do a painting, sometimes just paint it all in sepia. Do like a black and white sepia painting. 
try that and then add color to that. Like if you were doing a landscape with a little barn, do the whole thing with different shades of the sepia, which is the brown, and make it like an old photograph, black and white. Then when it dries, you go in and just lightly brush in the color. You can have some interesting effects that way. Little tip for you. Okay, we got a little bit of yellow. We're going to even wipe that off. And we're going to put a little bit of yellow here, you see? Oh, that looks nice because it's a sunny day out there. Yep. Okay, slap that bugger on. Don't be afraid. Less is more. Scrub that in. See, by toning the canvas underneath, if I miss a spot or two, it's going to be okay. See, it's a sunny day. Okay, we got that. Okay. Okay, what we're going to do at this point is I'm going to take a coffee break because I want this to fully dry. Now, if you're kind of in a rush, you can use a hair dryer. That's okay, too. But... The thing is, is that we're going to be creating something really cool on the black. We're going to do foliage and trees and stuff, and it really should be uh, dry, because otherwise the colors are going to become muddy. So you take your time and do that, and we'll fine-tune the details. Get in coffee, or you could, like I said, use a hair dryer if you want to speed it up, but I'm, I'm a coffee guy. I'm taking a break. Talk to you in a few minutes. Let this dry for probably... Uh, it could be anywhere from a half hour to an hour, depending on your humidity in your house. Okay, coffee break. Woohoo! Okay, we're back. And what we're going to do now is add some mountains in the back and fine tune this just a little bit. Now, this is completely dry. Like I said, you could use a uh, hair dryer if you want. Now, I'm going to begin this next session with a. I'm thinking it's maybe three quarters of an inch by maybe a half inch. As you can see this brush right here, this uh, will detail it. Now it's hard to detail with the two inch brush, although I probably could paint it with that, but I prefer uh, to maybe use this brush for a little bit better detail. Okay, what I've done is I've taken a little bit of the purple. I'm going to mix it with white. Well, uh, let's see here. And maybe take a little bit of the uh, the blue, mix it in there. I want to get a very very uh, light purple mountain, and it's now you can mix this right on the canvas. What we're going for is a uh, kind of a real light shade, kind of between a, a purplish bluish for mountains in the background. Okay, I kind of like that. Okay, let's paint those in. Let's just like rough it in here. We're going to darken it up, darken it up a little bit, but this is what we're going to do. I want that a little bit darker, so I'm going to add a little bit more blue. Just going to put it right in there. Mix it right on the canvas. So you want it to be kind of like a purple blue. There you go. Just rough it right in there. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to use my two inch brush. Yeah. Go back to my two inch brush. Wipe that off. But whatever brush you're comfortable with. I'm so used to working with a two inch brush for everything. Let's just fire that in. There you go. Maybe get a little bit more purple in there. Now you don't always have to mix it directly on the palette. You can pick up color, pick up other color, and mix it right on your canvas. And you just want to fire that in. And we're getting a nice effect here. I'm going to make my mountain come down just a little bit more. And pick it up. You can always fine tune it as you go along. There you go. By leaving some of the color, by mixing some of the color directly on your canvas, you can get some interesting effects. Okay, we'll fine tune it. We're just basically laying in color at this point. Okay, we'll fine tune it afterwards. Okay, top of the mountain should be just a little bit darker. Okay, 
see how you blend it right there on the canvas. We'll come in with our other brush and, and fine tune it, but we're just basically laying in color right now. Okay. Now you have some on the brush. What we're going to do is carry it through here just a little bit. I'm going very, very light with the brush. Almost like, ladies, you could understand this one, like when you're putting on blush, how you do it. This is the same way you do uh, this brush technique. The same way. You just like brush it in. We're just basically, we want to fill in uh, little areas of color. Maybe put a little spot right there. Put another little spot right there. This way we're carrying the color throughout the, uh, the project here. And you don't have to uh, create solid parts. Let the brush fluff. You know, feather it in. It's okay. That's good. You know, we're creating spots of color. Okay. Maybe just a little bit right there. Okay. Nothing fancy. Okay, let me uh, uh, clean off this brush. Okay. Okay. Next thing that we're going to do, let's straighten out that mountain just a little bit better. Let's go a bit more purple going on here. Okay. We're not going to worry about uh, getting it perfect. We just were basically just laying in the color. You'll fine tune it afterwards. No, it's like raking leaves. When there's a lot of leaves on the ground, you go for the biggest piles first and then pick up all the rest of the stuff later on. My wife is a fanatic. She's got to get everything perfect the first time. I don't. I go for big stuff. Get the bulk of it done. Then go back and then fine tune it. That's the way I always do it. That's the way I run my life. I, that's the way I do it. See, now I'm putting in a little bit of the purple. Mixing it up at the top. Okay. Let's get a little bit of white going on here. You just play with it. It should be lighter toward the bottom. Oops, too much, but a little bit more blue on here. Just like that, maybe a little bit more white. Okay, let's get out of these details here. And you just let the colors mix right there on the palette, just like that. You don't have to worry. Don't be too critical. You'll fine tune it later. Okay, that's good enough. Gives me a general idea what I want to do. Okay, again, let's take a little bit of this color. Let's pop a little bit here, a little bit there. You know, carry it throughout. Maybe a little bit there. Okay, that's good. Okay, next thing we're going to do is I want to fix the sky just a little bit better. This will uh, define the mountaintop. Okay, I'm going to take white. Just a little bit of white. Let me put this thing down here and wipe it off. And let's just lightly brush it in. And we're going now to define our, the way the mountain is. Kind of backwards painting, but hey, it works. You just follow around here. And we're defining the, there you go. Just like that. There you go. It should always be lighter toward the, remember, always light against dark. So we are, it should always be lighter at the horizon and get a little darker as you go up. And you just brush that in, dry brush effect. Now with the same brush, I'm fine tuning the edges a little bit. And we'll come in and we'll get that perfect later. Right now we're just generally getting an idea of where we want to be with this. Okay. Okay. 
So that's kind of coming together now. You got your light down here, and there you go. Okay, we're going to go back to our small brush. Let's get our palette up here. We're going to take some white, a little bit of yellow ochre, and just kind of mix that lightly with a little bit of the white. And we're going to create a little path here by the mountain. We're going to come down here, and we're going to just be free with it and create like a little valley. Now, you don't want to always mix the paint all the way. You want to uh, leave, uh, just pick up paint, but don't mix it to a solid color. Leave some white in there. Just, just pick up a little yellow and a little bit of white and go for it. Because that's what makes it interesting when the color uh, gets gets on the uh, canvas and you kind of mix it right on the canvas. Okay, we're going to come down here just to like this. And we're going to make a rounded area just like this. What we're doing is we're creating just kind of like a little path going through here. Okay. Now, just like any mountain, you will have a uh, base and like a foreground and we'll use the rest of the paint to create this. Okay, and maybe it'll go on to here like this. Okay. Right now basically what we're doing is just laying in color. We're not worried so much just to get an idea of where we want to be and what we want to do. You know, you create your little path. Now, this might look chaotic to you, but there's going to be like trees and stuff in here, so this will work out fine. And we'll fine tune this too. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Okay, let's fine tune this a little bit. We're going to take a little bit of the uh, black. And we're going to mix it with a little bit of violet. Maybe just a little bit of the red. And we are going to fine tune this now with this brush. So this is almost like a red black. And now we're going to straighten out these edges a little bit. To make this a little bit better, okay. Yep, okay. Do the same on this side. See, you can go back and you can fine tune it. Just get in your colors, that's all that matters right now. Lay down your base, that's the main thing. You can always add to it, like I said. Really easy schmeasy. <laughs> okay. Now we want to uh, tighten this up just a little bit. Okay. Just like there. Okay. Okay. Did I say okay enough? <laughs> okay. Like right here, I want to fine tune it. Okay. And tighten up the edges right here. Okay, there we go. Looks good. Okay, let me uh, wipe off my brush real quick. <clears throat> get off that brush, get back to my old tried and true two inch. I'm gonna take a little bit of the white Wipe it off on my, and we're going to put a little white in here. Now, I'm not putting that much on. I just have a little bit on my brush. It's dry brush technique. You want to go slow and just brush it in. I'm going to add a little bit more paint right here because I know that I want to, 
the finest edge. So this is almost all pure white going right on here, as you can see. Just like that, there you go. Now I'm going to fine tune this edge right here. And go along with the brush and fine tune this edge and go down. Get a little bit more white on my brush and just follow it around. See how that's going? We're creating a and then blend it up. Okay. See? You just feather it in. Okay, that's good. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a uh, tiny bit of the purple. Now I'm going on the side of my brush and I'm mixing it with just a little bit of the white. As you can see, it's just a tiny bit and we're going to rough that in the sky to give it kind of like a pinkish. And we're just popping it in like that. Get a little bit more on the brush, just like that. Almost, it's almost dry. It's almost like a dry brush. I love pink. I don't know why in the sky. It always looks so cool. I just love doing that. Now, usually I have a pink house paint that I use. I bought it on a, a mist tent, and I love that pink. That always just pops skies. But for this demonstration, we'll just use this. So you want to basically, it's just like blush. Remember what I said about the blush? That's all you want to do with the, uh, the pink or the, the purple. It's just a purple and white mixture. Just go really lightly with it and blend it as you go. You know, take a little bit more white. You see? Just rub it in there just like that. Okay. And now we're creating something here. Now you can use any colors you want. Feel free to experiment. Okay, now we have our base, basis down and uh, we are going to uh, put in some uh, interesting effects right here. Okay, I'm going to use the corner of this brush. I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow and let's see, I'm going to take a little bit sap green, a little bit more yellow and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to mix it. I'm just going to use the corner of the brush to create some interesting effects. You know, just like there. Just scrub it in. Little interesting effects. Does not have to be perfect. creating kind of like little round things to simulate uh, uh, different types of uh, trees and foliage. Okay, going to take a little bit of the red, just like there, on the corner of my brush. And we're going to add just a little bit of red right here. You dab it in. Let's dab some more in right here. Get a little bit more in here. Oops, a little bit too much, but that's okay. We'll just work it in here, in here, in here. We're creating kind of like an abstract landscape, you know, by just adding different types of colors. And you want to kind of let the black come through, you know, you don't have to worry. You want to kind of have that come through because that's what makes it interesting. And you could use a sponge if you wanted to. That's okay too to, to put in those colors. 
that's an interesting thing. Okay, now we're going to clean our brush and we're going to get some, uh, uh, let's say some lighter green right here. And we're going to add that in. See, we're just doing different colors. Now I have not cleaned my brush, so we're just doing a lot of different little colors in here. Take a little bit more green, do the same on this side. And we're adding color, beautiful colors. And you want to leave some of the black go through. You don't want to try to cover up everything. That's not what it's all about. Okay. Use the back of the brush, create some interesting effects. Okay. Maybe take a little bit of the, uh, the blue, maybe a little bit of the purple. Mix it up and create some uh, maybe lighter areas right here. Now what I'm doing is I'm picking up a little bit of the white and uh, it has paint on it like the green and it's still You know, and just by popping it in, don't be afraid. You know, go lightly with it. You're creating effects here. And up to create our mountain. Okay, I'll show you how this is all going to come together in a minute. Okay, let's get rid of this brush. Let's go back to our smaller brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the purple, mix it with a little bit of the black, and start defining things. Basically, we're going to do this. And now you'll have paint that uh, is wet, and you can pull down on it because we're we're trying to create. Uh, kind of like trees and, and branches and things. It's kind of like an abstract um, painting. So and you can use this, you can scratch into it to bring it down. It's to create shapes and forms. And you blend right there while the paint is wet. Okay, let's define this a little bit. Going to use a little bit of the purple. And define the edge right here. Okay. Purple on black looks kind of good. I don't know if you could see it, but it adds a different dimension. It's not just a flat black. And you pop in some purple here and purple there. Okay. We're going to find this just a little bit. Let's pick up a little bit of the red and pop this right here. Use the back of your brush for different techniques and styles. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay. This is our little path going up here. So we kind of define that a little bit. Okay, let me wipe off my brush real quick. Oh, okay.
Okay, now I'm picking up a little bit of the white and I'm going to define things a little bit better here. Define the base of the mountain just a little bit. And it's all about laying in colors and I have white mixed with just a tiny bit of the purple. You just play with it and you're creating different uh, different movements. Create our little path here. Okay, and we also carry through some of this here. And you want to make a little like half circles here for different, uh, of different types of effects. But you want to leave a lot of the black to show through too. Throw a little bit of purple in here. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of uh, the dark green and pop it in here. Just a little bit. Let's see here. Mix a little bit more black and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the purple and let's define things here. And you just play with it and have fun and put down those colors and don't worry about it. You can always fine tune it later. I don't like that green up there. Let's add just a little bit of blue, blue to the black. There you go. And creating is what's fun when you just do this. Let's get a little bit more of a slope on here. There's no right or way to, right way to do this. You just do it and have fun. This is to give you an idea. Try it. Yours will probably even come out better than mine. Who knows? Let me wash off my brush. The main thing is to do it. Don't think about it. Don't be a think about artist. Do it. Let's get a little bit green. We're going to get a little bit of yellow and we're going to paint that in just like that. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Need a little bit more sap green here. Oops, a little bit of yellow. Maybe put some in here. Okay. And don't be afraid to use the back of that, that of this brush. Okay, I want to highlight those mountains just a little bit better. Let me wipe off my brush again. It's always important to keep those brushes completely clean when you're picking up other colors because that makes all the difference in the world. Okay, I'm picking up pure white 
and I'm going to put a little white spot right there because I want that to be seen. That's the beginning of my path. And it might go up just a little bit. Maybe just up just a little bit like that. Yeah, just by laying on top, colors on top of colors. That's what it's all about. I'm using always the corners of the brush. That's what you do. You can use the corners of these brushes. It's learning how to have fun and use the brush the right way. I mean, there's all different ways you can use it, and you can get a lot of different strokes by varying your brush. Don't be afraid to vary it, because that's what makes interesting things. Let's get a little bit more white going right here. And mixing right there on the canvas. You don't have to blend every single color to get a solid color. You don't have to do that. You could pick up your whites and your yellows and leave them on the brush and put them on. You'd be surprised and blend right on the canvas. That can make some really interesting effects. I picked up some blue right here and a little bit of white. And basically what you're doing is you are adding different types of colors. Now you don't want to have too many. Uh, you want to have uh, some more solid colors of, of I mean, uh, you know, if you have a bunch of a thousand colors all going in, it can be mass confusion. You want to uh, <clears throat> kind of keep to a... Uh, do have some solid areas. That's the problem with a lot of abstracts. A lot of people put so many colors in it. I've done it myself. I do it. But you have to have at least one or two central colors that um, that pull the piece together. Okay, see I'm just picking up some white. Okay, we're picking up a little bit of red. Let me wash off this brush again. Oh, yeah. I know, most of painting is completely always cleaning those brushes. It takes time. Okay, what I don't want to do, okay, let's pick up a little bit of the red. Oh, let's pick up a little bit of orange. We haven't had any orange in there. And put it on top of the red. Or you just highlight maybe the tops. Little bits of color here. Carry your colors all the way through. And if you were to look down uh, in the fall in a mountain view like this, you squint your eyes, it becomes a blur of all different types of colors. And that's basically what you paint. You paint like you're squinting through your eyes just to see the colors. It doesn't have to be perfectly defined. It could be just blobs of colors. Okay. Let's get a little bit more black going on here. And um, maybe a little bit of purple, purple and black. Okay, we're taking some blue and we're putting some blue on the black, some of the dark blue. That creates a, kind of like a depth to it. It always looks good on the... Okay, our sun is coming from this way, so we're going to take a little bit of white. 
mix it with the blue and let's I like the mountains right here just a little bit using the corner of my brush just to add some depth to it here maybe there'll be something down here and we'll just like do that different types of colors Okay, there might be just undo our brush right here. Maybe just a little color down here, just like this. Try brushing it. Just to add different dimensions of color. what I've done with the brush is I went against the grain creates an interesting effect you'll see how this will all come out at the end create our movements here this isn't conventional painting it's more a painting of color you know okay let's get a little bit of red going on up here let's put just a little bit of red just a little bit add color up there You can see how this is coming all together now. Let me wash my brush again. That's the bar thing about painting. You know, it's 10 seconds of painting and 20 seconds of cleaning the brush. Uh, maybe if I get rich enough someday, I'll just have somebody, I'll hand the brushes to them and let them clean them. <laughs> That'll never happen, right? I guess that's the fun of doing it. Okay, let's fine tune it now. We've got our basics down. I'm going to Take some white and, oops, take some pure white. Now we're adding a little bit thicker color. I don't want blue on it, but I'm getting blue. Okay. And you just go along the baseline like this with your brush and straighten it out. So you can add your thicker colors after that. To the fact. Let's get some pure white. Maybe we want to fine tune this just a little bit better. Remember, everything is light against dark. Everything you see, look around your room, it's light against dark. Always remember that. Put a light color against a dark color, and your paintings will will hit, take on a, a, a different uh, dimension. And just scoots this up. See, by adding the white afterwards, like what I'm doing, how it pops it, makes that really stand out. That's why you don't want to get hung up on all the details at the beginning. You, you paint in your details afterwards. You know, you have to lay your foundation. You can't create a perfect painting from every stroke. You don't want to do that. You want to lay down your foundation. Just get your colors down there, then go on from there. That's what makes an interesting painting. You know, this might not be the world's best painting, but you know what? It's, it's not rigid. It's, it's, it's got a lot of brush strokes and movements in it. Let's do this a little bit quicker here. I want to fine tune this a little bit. I'm just using pure white. And it's just along the base here. And that makes those mountains pop in the back. Okay. Now what we want to do here is we want to lighten that up just a little bit down here. So we're going to take a little bit of the uh, white maybe a little bit of the blue, white and blue, 
and we're going to fine-tune this. Now this is the point where you can fix the mountain if it's not perfect and you want it different. See, I'm going in a little bit. You can fine-tune it after the fact. There you go, right up there. Let's do this here. Now, my paint had dried a little bit, so I'm going to give it a spritz with the spritzer bottle. Up oh, there you go, just a little bit. And that keeps your paint. There you go, and we're moving up on this like this. You give it a little spritz, and just lightly, lightly with this brush. You see, and just blend it into it. By giving it the old spritzer, it made a little bit of a difference here. And we're going to fine tune it. You see? Go up like this. We've created different movements here. And you can go up with your mountain. You know, create different, like, uh, different areas and little valleys and It's not rocket science. You just have to have fun with it. Have fun is what it's all about. And if it isn't perfect, let it dry. That's the best thing about acrylics. You can make it perfect as, over time, you know. Let's define things just a little bit better here. Okay. A little spritzer. It'll keep it moist. See, acrylics tend to dry really quick, so you got to really paint quick. Okay, we're almost finished with this. Okay, let me get a little bit more black here. Yeah, let's just pop this in here. There you go. It'll give you an idea of uh, the kind of painting you know, a different type of painting. Okay. And you can fine tune it as you go along by letting it dry, coming back to it. And maybe adding more bolder colors You know, you could even uh, you can add bolder colors later too. You know, even with a palette knife if you wanted to. And we're just painting in roughness, just roughing it in. That's all. Okay, let me go a little bit more up here. Okay, let's fine tune this just a little bit. Fine tune our path. Water probably made a little bit shiny. And you can use the back of your brush to kind of create, put it in the black a little bit, throw it in there, do some of these. It adds different, makes it look a little bit different. Scratch in there. Okay, let's get a little bit of yellows. And we're just almost finished with this. And hopefully it gave you an idea and something to do. Now you can always add brighter colors, see? If you want to do that after the fact. And add like a little bit of yellow here. Nothing fancy, but it's teaching you to be free with the paint and don't be afraid of it. Maybe throw a little bit of yellow here. You know, just relax and enjoy it. You can't make a mistake. 
And like I said, you can always paint over it. And always carry your colors all the way through. Well, that's just a general idea. Of course, I'm going to work on this a little bit more, but this gives you a general idea. Let me just throw a little bit of blue right here. And by adding the colors onto the black, it can really pop it. There you go. And we're creating illusions. And I'll show you this painting when it's all finished. But there you go. That's just a general idea. I will fine tune this a little bit more. And you'll see it at the end. But that's a general idea on how to begin doing kind of an abstract type landscape. You know, I'm going to work on this just a little bit more and, and fine tune it. And then I'll show it to you at the very end. But I hope you enjoyed this series. And basically, this is not the world's best painting, but you know what? It's, it's an idea uh, to let you go and how to use kind of abstractish colors to create different landscape patterns. You know, I, like I said, I have to fine tune this a little bit, but it gives you an idea on uh, how you can incorporate color, uh, colors to, in, to, to make things look like you know, like trees and stuff like that by just, just doing splashes of little colors. Okay, enough said. I could ramble on for hours. You know me. Thank you very much for watching this episode. And please try this painting because what I'm going to probably do is ask to see it and we'll put it in maybe a, uh, a Coffee with Sky segment. So go ahead and paint it. And if I ask for it, you'll have it ready. Try this. It's not rock and science. It's a lot of fun. Just relax and let go. And don't worry about the outcome. The outcome is irrelevant. The most important thing is to have fun and enjoy yourself. Thank you very much for watching this episode. God bless you. And we'll be talking to you real soon. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Give me a thumbs up if you hated it. Don't matter. I need the thumbs up. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.